Well, greetings on this March 2nd afternoon here in Dudney, British Columbia. I'm just going to walk around the monastery a little and uh, uh, just give you a little tour of what it's like this time of year here in British Columbia. Uh, in front of us is a pieris, sometimes called a lily of the valley bush. Coming to the end of its bloom now, it's been in bloom for since about the middle of February, but uh, the bees have just started to flock around it. And it's a particularly beautiful bush when you can see it up close. The um, blooms on it are shaped very similar to the blossoms on blueberry and huckleberry bushes. Very delicate little pockets. And uh, hanging down somewhat like miniature wisteria. And very fragrant. And uh, this will bloom now until about the end of March, beginning of April, right right through the uh, month of March, anyway. The fragrant violets are already finished. We had a little bit of an early bloom of violets at the beginning of February, and uh, they're, they're very rich fragrance that came along. I think a few might still be in bloom. We'll see if we can find some. The uh, periwinkle coming back again, and uh, we'll soon cover this whole slope with these deep purple blue flowers and uh, they don't have much of a fra they don't have much of a fragrance but they're very rich in in uh, in color as you can see too the willow trees are starting to come out the the, the leaves they're kind of a rich green this time of year and uh, hanging down like delicate sort of lace or something um, we always look for the beginning when the limbs, the stems and limbs, the small limbs, turn bright yellow, and then everything goes into this rich green color. Oh, we do have some fragrant violets. The yellow violets are not so fragrant, but the purple ones are, of course, quite fragrant. We have great masses of these. Sometimes the uh, Russians will glaze them with sugar and put them on the Sirnia Pasca, the special Russian cheesecake that uh, made in a sort of a pyramid shape. And the violets, of course, are edible, so they're um, glazed and used for, to make a beautiful decoration on the Sirnia Pasca. Uh, in front of us now, the heliobores are sometimes called the Christmas rose, because they begin to bloom on about January the 7th. Um, and, of course, that would be the time of the old Christmas in Britain. So they were called Christmas roses. And uh, they spread gradually. And they're one of the earliest blooming plants that we have here at the monastery. And uh, quite beautiful and striking when they first come out. Oh, I see we have some more violets. I thought they were all gone, but they're still here. It's this time of year that we have to prune some of the uh, later blooming plants, like the, with the uh, wisteria will be leafing out soon, and the fuchsias. And we have the wild fuchsia bushes here, and uh, they grow back every year, but you have to prune them in the spring to give the new shoots a chance because they bloom on the new wood, not the old wood. Well, I see the... Uh, Fuchsia is already beginning to leaf out. If, we're, if they're not pruned soon, we won't get quite as many blossoms as, uh, or blooms as we would. The pansies have come back again, and uh, the posk flowers are, are already up above the ground. We don't have any posk flowers on the property, but they've been blooming for quite a while. The, uh, one of the most spectacular bushes this time of year is the forsyth bush or forsythia and uh, you can see the back by the holy well the um, forsythia putting on a great show and it, it'll bloom too until all oh, toward the end of March the camellias are starting to bud out I see in uh, in the city some people's camellias are already in full in full bloom 
uh, we have a little bit more chill weather here, so the um, camellias will come a little bit later. Magnolias, the early magnolias have started to bloom in this area too. And I think you can see just on the other side of the log here, um, one of the azaleas. We don't have much in the way of azaleas, but this one is starting to open up. In uh, some areas, the azaleas have been blooming now for a couple of weeks. But uh, again, here where the monastery is, just a little bit cooler, and they won't bloom until a little later. The rhododendrons are starting to bloom. The early ones are really in full bloom. And here's another Pieris or another uh, a different color or shade of the uh, lily of the valley bush. And uh, as you can see the little openings at the bottom that attract a lot of bees this time of year. The Japonicas and uh, this uh, particular bush has only minuscule white flowers on it, but the variety of the colors of the leaves is what's uh, striking about it. You see the uh, lupins, have, lupins have come up and the early lupins will be blooming by the end of March. The uh, daffodils just ready to open. We'll have quite a few tulips here in uh, another couple of weeks. And here in the Memorial Park we can see already the uh, primroses or primulus that have started to bloom. We have quite a few primulas and uh, they're particularly popular around grave sites because they come back year after year. The willow trees are always so spectacular at this time of year. There's a double flowering cherry that's got buds on it already, but not quite enough leaves. When one goes into the city, especially Vancouver, there are great avenues lined with Japanese cherries that are all in full blossom right now. And even in the nearby city of Mission, a lot of Japanese cherries and plums. The ones that produce blooms but no uh, but no fruit and um, they'll be coming out in uh, our area just we're only six kilometers from mission but there's enough difference in temperature that our uh, flowering trees are going to be about three weeks behind the ones six kilometers down the valley in mission but you can see a lot of the buds already on the double flowering cherry and a little shot of the flowering plum, which always starts early by us. And there's the uh, rather spectacular flowering plum. The sad thing is we have to bring that tree down this year because so much at the base of it is dead and rotten. So we'll plant another smaller one. Just a little brief tour of the monastery at this time of year to, to fill in on the uh, YouTube broadcast. Thank you and God bless you.